Fuzzles, what do you mean fuzzles don't like Mudokins? When do the fuzzles not like Mudokins? Oh, maybe he was looking at the bad endings uh, where yeah. they turn on him. But the, th but the fuzzles, yeah, I never had it that the fuzzles didn't like Mudokins. It was just that Munch had the ability to communicate with them. And then, and then Stranger would use them as weapons. Get him! Get him! <laughs> Uh, no, but that's really because of budgetary. It's a, it's a tricky question to ask, so I'd say what it was supposed to be, I'd say in my mind, I was a little too ambitious at the time where the technology was at, and that was on the original Abe's Odyssey, which was a very challenging project to deliver because um, we had to build the studio, the engine, and, and the title in one budget, you know, in one mad rush, so it was pretty accelerated. But, you know, you only have so much time and money, and then, and then you're compromising everywhere you can to deliver. But I felt like the title was delivered in a very concise package that represented the fable of Abe very well. Like, it was, it was very, to me, it was like Dr. Seuss, you know, Green Eggs and Ham. It's, it's Green Eggs and Ham. It should last, right? It's a nice little fable. So I had a lot more ambitious thoughts for Abe's Odyssey when we built it that got brought down to earth because, you know, you, you learn about building games and then you you have budgetary constraints and production resource constraints and all kinds of challenges. But it wound up pretty contained to that part of the story. So when we got to the point of remaking New and Tasty, it was less about we're going to remake it in the original vision that it was, and it was more about what can we afford to do, you know? It was more about with the money we have, we polled the audience, what would you like us to do? They said, we want you to do the redo Abe's Odyssey. So then we said, well, if we're gonna redo it, then we really need to redo it like from a fresh start uh, and not rewriting it all, but just in true 3D technology. The real driver was we had a limited budget. We uh, couldn't build a brand new game because you know so designing all those new puzzles and all new characters, it's a huge budgetary difference from re making a remake. And so what really drove New and Tasty was it was what we could afford and we thought like we could bring Abe's Odyssey a little more into the 21st century but still stay true to that fable that it was. And if we did that well, then hopefully that would, you know, land us in a place where we could start, use that as the kickoff to reignite the idea of the five-part epic of which Soulstorm is now part two. So hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, well, the, so the whole property is kind of based on on these themes at its at its core inception, and it's interesting because people have you know since that Ape's Odyssey theme was kind of foretelling, you know, foreshadowing. It's it seemed more just like rebellious than prophetic, but it was really designed around all practices. You know, those themes are here for us to see if we're looking at how the world works. And a lot of people said our games are political. Our games are not political; they're philosophical. I would not call 1984 a political thriller you know that that was more a philosophical warning right and i've always looked at in making content it's all kind of warnings like the more research you do on the ways that the world might be working the more grim it is particularly with you know younger younger demographics that are emerging into a world where they have less and less less and less faith that the older generations are looking out for them or did look out for them just look at the planet right that's one way of uh, when I talk to <clears throat> really young people, they, they, you know, they just feel like the previous generation sold them out. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. But who, who do you really blame? Right. Or is it a blame game or is it just something we got to try and fix? So when I look at we have the ability as artists to create content, then to me, it's is the content that we're creating something that inspires people or is it something that is just wasting, you know, just kind of giving them some empty empty nutrients or empty calories but it's taking up their time and they're having fun and they feel like they got a good value for their money all that's fair and good but as an artist you usually want to weave in more so that it leaves people with a little uncomfortable niggling of something that they need to keep on thinking about I, that's why i think Oddworld held up because it was the nature of the things it was talking about were only beginning to really become 
popular ideas. Oh, my God.